Can you make good chicken stock using leftover chicken bones from your roast chickens? Until a year ago, I would have said no. Now, I say yes. If you want to jump to the recipe, look below the video for the timestamps. But what's most interesting about this video is not the recipe, but an exploration of how people form their cooking convictions and sometimes end up with blind spots. When I was a young and impressionable cook, I read the Zuni Cafe cookbook by Judy Rogers. This book had a huge effect on my cooking and became my cooking bible of sorts. Judy Rogers uses a whole chicken in her stock minus the breast meat. And here's what she has to say about making stock with bones alone. Chicken stock brewed from mostly bones, especially stockpiled, tired ones, tastes dull to me and isn't worth the trouble or even the small expense. Well, that was that. If I was going to make stock, I was going to do it the right way. I use Judy's method with a slight modification. She uses raw chicken because her stock is either used in soups or as a base for other brown stocks. For example, she roasts beef bones and then cooks them in her blonde chicken stock to make a beef stock. And she does the same for pork, lamb, duck, rabbit, etc. Since I'm lazy and I use chicken stock for everything, I make it out of roasted chicken. I've developed several recipes for it. One with the store-bought salt-free rotisserie chickens and one with home roasted chicken parts. It's delicious stock, but many viewers were upset that I was throwing away all that meat. They asked, why don't I just use leftover bones from roasted chickens after eating the meat? The short answer was that Judy Rogers said not to do that. <laughs> My other worry was that the stock would be salty because the roasted chicken that I made for eating versus stock were salted. I was also concerned that the stock wouldn't be gelatinous enough. Out of curiosity, I tried it once and made a video about it. My fears of saltiness and reduction in gelatin turned out to be unfounded. After the meat was eaten, there was barely any salt left in the bones, and as long as I used lots of bones, there was plenty of gelatin. What the stock lacked was roasted flavor. So I dismissed it again. There was definitely confirmation bias involved. Letting go of your long-held beliefs is hard. Then some viewers gave me an idea to roast the bones before making stock. Somehow, the idea of roasting the bones of a chicken that was already roasted didn't occur to me. I tried it and it worked like a charm. All the roasted flavor was back and it was way faster than roasting chicken parts. Water is the enemy of browning and the meat has a ton of water. To brown chicken parts successfully, I had to thoroughly dry every piece and wait for at least 40 minutes. Chicken bones have almost no moisture in them, so they go from frozen to well browned in 15 to 20 minutes without any preliminary defrosting or drying. Does this mean that Judy Rogers was wrong? Not exactly. In a blonde stock that she is making, the presence of the meat makes a big difference. The primary flavor of a blonde stock is that of the chicken, and chicken meat really helps with that. The primary flavor in a brown stock is that of the Maillard reaction, and that can be accomplished with or without the meat. Now that you know why, Let's talk about how. Whenever you make any chicken dish that has bones, save them in a gallon size Ziploc bag in your freezer. I don't just save the carcasses, I save the bones from people's plates too. I also save the wingtips and the necks that are often packed with whole chickens. It's fine if your bag has a mixture of raw and already cooked parts. Once I accumulate two full bags, I make stock. Preheat the oven to 500 degrees, dump the frozen bones on a baking sheet, 
if possible a well-seasoned or dark one. Place in the middle of the oven and turn on the convection fan. If you don't have a fan, that's fine. It will just take longer. After 7 to 10 minutes, the bones will have defrosted and you can spread them out. Some might already be brown enough to remove. Keep roasting the bones and removing the brown ones as they are done. I check up on them every 5 minutes. As you remove the brown bones, redistribute what's left to keep an even layer. It typically takes me 15 to 20 minutes to get a good color on everything. Dump all the bones into an 8-quart pot. I recently started using tomato paste in my stocks. It adds lovely flavor and acidity, but feel free to skip it if you don't have it. Mine is frozen, that's why it looks funny. Add enough boiling water to cover the bottom of the pan and let it sit for 5 minutes. Scrape up all the brown bits. Be patient, it might take a couple of minutes to loosen them all. Dissolve the tomato paste, dump into the pot with bones, make sure to add all the scraps. See, my baking sheet is practically clean now. Cover the bones with cold water by a couple of inches, cover with a lid, set over high heat and bring close to a simmer, but not quite to prevent a boil over. Uncover and bring to a simmer. Once the bubbles are breaking the surface, reduce the heat enough to maintain a very gentle simmer and cook for 3 to 5 hours, depending on what works well with your schedule. Of course, you can also pressure cook on high for 1 to 2 hours with a natural release. About 30 to 60 minutes before you are done, add some chopped celery, carrots, yellow onions, parsley and thyme sprigs, black peppercorns and a bay leaf. The amounts are flexible and everything is optional. If it's more convenient to add all the veggies in the beginning, go right ahead, but the aroma will be more potent if you don't cook them for hours and hours. Strain the stock through a fine mesh strainer into a 4-quart pot. I start by ladling and once the pot is not as full, I partially cover it with a lid and pour. If all the stock doesn't fit, start a new pot or a container. Pour a couple of cups of water over the bones to remove the remaining gelatin. Cover the pot, swoosh it around and strain. There are so many reasons to reduce stock before storage. It takes way less room in the freezer and saves you time when making pan sauces. If you ever decide to use the stock for soup, risotto or paella, just add the water back in. I prefer to reduce it four times. In other words, four quarts will become one quart. Before reducing, I like to degrease, but you don't need to be thorough about it. Let your stock settle for five minutes. Then carefully scoop the fat off the top and pour it into the second pot or container with stock. Since all this will be used, you don't need to worry about scooping some of the stock along with the fat. I usually save this little bit of stock in the fridge and use it within a week. Turn up the heat and bring the stock to a rolling boil. Now that all the solids are out, we don't need to worry about the stock turning muddy and can boil the heck out of it on high heat. Given the spot size and the intensity of my burners, I don't pay attention for the first hour. After that, I start checking every 15 minutes and eventually every 5 minutes as I get very close. With a straight-sided pot, it's very easy to judge how much your stock is reduced. I started with about 4 inches of stock. Once I am at about 1 and a quarter inches, I'll stop. Precision is not important here. We just want to evaporate enough water so that the stock is small, quick to cool, compact enough to store, fast to defrost, and easy to use in pan sauces. Here we go. We are just over an inch. Let's cool it until warm and pour into four containers, each one holding about one cup. Put your containers with reduced stock in the fridge, uncovered to cool completely. Then cover, label and freeze. 
Because they contain so much gelatin, they are not nearly as hard as frozen water after freezing. When the time comes to make a pan sauce, there is no need to plan ahead and defrost them. Just get one of the jars out 15 minutes before you need it. Turn it out onto a cutting board and cut into quarters. Just maybe don't use your favorite chef's knife for this task. To deglaze a 10 inch pan, you'll need one quarter. To deglaze a 12 inch pan, you'll need two quarters. I'm curious, how do you feel about the idea of saving the chicken bones from people's plates to use in stock? This is not a food safety issue. These bones are heated to death during stock making and there is no worry about germs. But it's interesting to me whether some people would be squeamish about it. Let me know in the comments below. By the way, no need to limit the stock to chicken bones alone. If you have any bones from steaks or pork chops, throw them in. I'm sure that a hundred years ago, no cook would let a single bone go unused. Here are more thought-provoking culinary videos for you to check out. And if you are ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.